We all are witnessing a piece of UFC history here tonight. This place is deafening right now. Oh. I got chills, man. I can't believe it's really gonna happen. It is gonna happen. So July of 2009, I'll never forget it. It felt like the biggest sporting event of my lifetime. It felt like a Super Bowl. There was certainly something seminal about UFC 100. There were a lot of big events leading up to UFC 100, 93, 94, 98. The sport felt like it was just gaining a ton of domestic momentum that maybe it hadn't had a year prior. And it was mission accomplished, right, in terms of the execution. UFC 100 was a, a massive event, first of all, because it was a gigantic, spectacular card filled with high-level fighters. The fight was at Mandalay Bay. However, it only holds 12,000 people. And there were over 60,000 people in town for the UFC Fan Expo. It was a week of UFC. The city of Las Vegas for four or five days was UFC heaven. John Jones was one of the bigger betting favorites on this fight card. He was on the preliminary portion. That's how big this event was. John Jones was on the undercard. Johnny Bones Jones! The UFC absolutely loaded up for UFC 100, and as a promotion, you can stack the deck. This was the biggest story in sport. You had Dan Henderson, Bisbing, and that was capping off coaching the show. I've never really had any ill will against Dan. On the Ultimate Fighter, me and Dan, we know we're gonna fight. I approach every fight the same way. I never underestimate my opponents, so regardless of what the bookies say, favorite, underdog, it is what it is. We all saw how that went down. Look out! Oh! Oh my God! It is all over! Wow! My guy's a good talker. You know, Dan Henderson don't say much, but yeah, okay. H bomb. Boom! I think that one was just to shut him up a little bit. George St. Pierre, Brock Lesnar versus Frank Mir, and I believe GSP showed how great wrestling was. Slams him down. Shortly after, I went and got a tattoo on my chest, like GSP going straight down. Boom. Memorable. George St. Pierre's performance against Tiago Alves at UFC 100 will go down in history as the fight that made me wholly appreciate wrestling and MMA. That was the night he made the takedown a thing of beauty. It's not as though this was the widest spread on the betting line going in. A lot of people liked Tiago Alves' game, but what George St. Pierre did that night in taking Tiago Alves down methodically 10 times over 25 minutes is something I will never forget. GSP is one of the best to ever do it. Hard work, talent, and he was a complete mixed martial artist. That's why he was so successful. GSP was a megastar and could have probably headlined that card himself, but they had Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, Frank Mir, I still get chills talking about this series. Brock Lesnar certainly made his statement that night. He was the favorite in this second meeting. Going into the UFC 100, I was extremely confident, uh, probably too much so, just because I felt that Brock Lesnar's skills were very limited. And I was correct in that assessment, just that what he was good at, he was very good at. He's got so much power in those fists, Mike. That's it. Herb Dean is there, and it is all over! He's out. I can still feel the tremors. The fight was absolutely incredible. Both him and Frank Mir put it on the line. When mixed martial arts first started, it was the 205ers, it was the heavyweights. Well, the baddest man on the planet was always the heavyweight champion of the world. Of all the events that I've had the privilege to cover, and as I sit here, I've been voicing UFC fights for now 11 or so years, UFC 100 is probably the greatest live event that I have ever attended. I don't know if the promotion ran UFC 100 100 times back, they could produce a better result top to bottom.